Hi guys, Dr. Heimlich here, and today I'm going to go over another hidden reason why you can have hypothyroid symptoms, even though you're taking your medications and your lab tests come back normal. And that reason is called high cortisol. So what is cortisol? Well, it's a hormone made in your adrenal gland. I know you've heard of those guys before. Those are little stress glands that sit on top of your kidneys. They make the hormone, aldosterone, cortisol, and androgens. And the adrenal glands are crucial for good health. So what does cortisol do? Well, cortisol is responsible for regulating your blood sugar. With cortisol release, uh, when it gets released into your uh, adrenal glands, it's accompanied by things called cytokines. And cytokines are messengers used by your immune system. This creates an inflammatory response. These cytokines suppress its ability for the pituitary and your hypothalamus to make TSH, which is thyroid stimulating hormone. When this happens, you start to get some or all of the thyroid symptoms like fatigue, weight gain, uh, depression, constipation, hair falling out, dry skin, uh, poor circulation, numbness in the hands and feet, uh, morning headaches that wear off as the day goes by. So follow me as I explain about the low thyroid symptoms in your adrenal glands because those adrenal glands make the cortisol in response to stress. And there are different kinds of stress. Any, anything that promotes uh, inflammation or causes inflammation will cause your adrenal glands to pump out more cortisol. Uh, and as that cortisol is released, so are the cytokines. They come out as well. And that's what's going to suppress your pituitary gland, which is up in the brain. And that squashes down on your thyroid so it doesn't do what it's supposed to. And the most common cause of elevated cortisol is blood sugar regulation problems. High sugar, low sugar, insulin spikes and valleys hidden gut infections um, you haven't been able to eliminate, uh, chronic stress. Well, let's say a couple of words about each one of those. Uh, when you have a blood sugar problem, it means that your sugar is not regular. Your blood sugar is going up and down, and when blood sugar goes up and down, cortisol levels start to go up and down, which means the cytokine levels go up and down, and then we have this uh, whole pituitary getting squashed and not making enough of the thyroid hormones and then you start to have those symptoms. The key point to remember here is that you do not have to be diagnosed as a diabetic to have blood sugar problems. There are two varieties of blood sugar problems um, and again you don't have to be diagnosed as a diabetic. You can have hypoglycemia, reactive hypoglycemia, which means your sugar drops between meals um, or you don't eat or you wait too long to eat. The next time you do, you get this big surge of insulin, and then here comes a big surge of cortisol. It doesn't matter whether you're, uh, uh, you have low blood sugar or high blood sugar. In both cases, it's going to cause blood sugar dysregulation. So for example, you get shaky, uh, lightheaded, irritable between meals. That means you have thyroid problems. And this could be one of the reasons why, because blood sugar is going up and down and fluctuates and causes fluctuation in the cytokines which causes inflammation then you have the thyroid problems. The second thing that can cause excessive cortisol is infection. And it's not necessarily like strep throat. We're talking about many times a hidden gut or GI infection that you have no idea that you have because it may be subclinical meaning symptoms that you don't even realize. That causes high cortisol and low thyroid symptoms. And there's a test you can do for it. It's a DNA a uh, PCR test for the stool. This is definitive as to whether you have a parasite, fungus, yeast, uh, some sort of pathogen in your gut driving it. Um, and that's where I mean driving the adrenal glands and pumping out that cortisol, uh, which makes increased levels of cytokines. And again, that's right, it suppresses your pituitary. Mental stress is the third type of thing that can cause this uh, adrenal glands to start pumping out the cortisol. I mean, many low thyroid sufferers are stressed by uh, many different parts of their life. Uh, they feel bad, the classic stress response. So for those people, um, uh, this is a part what we do for treatment in the program. We teach them how to um, how to deal with the stress. And I'm not talking necessarily about being a therapist. I'm talking about teaching you very powerful but simple ways of helping your body not to have the stress response, but have a relaxing response. Um, whoever's taking care of you right now you're under care right now and you're not addressing the stress type of component, you're being underserved. At least I think you're being underserved. Um, if your stress levels are, are sitting high and your adrenal glands are still going and pumping hard, 
cortisol levels are going to increase up to an excess. And here goes those cytokine levels. And then the problems are going to ensue because, of, again, your thyroid's not going to be able to do what it's supposed to because of the pituitary. And remember, your pituitary is a key important, uh, important component in your thyroid health. I'm Dr. Heimlich. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you.